How about Jim Harbaugh? Now, I mean, I think that this is something where we have a perfect opportunity for football symmetry. And football symmetry would be Jim Harbaugh and his college team, Michigan, winning a national title in the same season as the 49ers win a Super Bowl. So Harbaugh and the Michigan Wolverines have done their part of that equation. Now the 49ers are entering their playoff run and really could put a neat bow on history. If you like full circle kind of stuff, well, I, I'm sure everybody here knows the story. Harbaugh was the 49ers coach from 2011 to 2014. The 49ers went to three NFC Championship games and one Super Bowl, but it was one of the more thrilling areas of 49ers history, but it was also one of the more gut-wrenching, and I would say one of the most gut-wrenching eras of 49ers history. They were unable to notch the Super Bowl title. They weren't able to get it. They weren't able to finish the job under Jim Harbaugh. But he has finished the job now for Michigan. The 49ers obviously have moved on to a new regime. This is we're several regimes down the road. I guess Trent Baalke, who feuded with Jim Harbaugh while the 49ers were fighting, scrapping and clawing to try to win that one Super Bowl. Trent Baalke was the GM before John Lynch. He survived a couple more head coaches. Finally, they fired Balky. They brought in John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan. Clean restart in 2017. And now the 49ers are favored to win a Super Bowl in a way that they have not yet been favored to win a Super Bowl under Shanahan and Lynch. And it might just so happen in the same season as Jim Harbaugh won a national championship at last with Michigan. It gives you an idea of just how long Jim Harbaugh has been away from the 49ers. He took that Michigan job right after leaving San Francisco. So his first season coaching the Wolverines was in 2015. And he's been working hard to win this first national championship, building that program. For the longest time, it seemed that Jim Harbaugh couldn't find a quarterback that was good enough to, to win a national title at Michigan or even beat Ohio State at Michigan. Finally, he's got J.J. McCarthy. They've beaten Ohio State a couple times in a row now. The big win over Alabama in the Rose Bowl, that game was much more entertaining than what we saw tonight. But, it, you know, for me, it brings me full circle, not only to the 49ers days of Jim Harbaugh, but to the Stanford days, which came before the 49ers days. The Orange Bowl with Andrew Luck. Richard Sherman was on that team. And then we all know how that story ended working out. Richard Sherman, not happy with Jim Harbaugh, thought that he backstabbed him in the NFL prep process. So then Richard Sherman took that rivalry very seriously when Pete Carroll drafted him instead. And then he yelled at Aaron Andrews in the postgame interview there in 2013. Well, Sherman and Harbaugh and Andrew Luck, those guys, they turned that Stanford team into a power in 2010. They won the Orange Bowl 40 to 8. And that Stanford team had the same kind of power running DNA that we would see with the San Francisco 49ers was the grind some meat days under Jim Harbaugh, right? He would say, let's grind some meat, boys. That was the way the 49ers would try to ice games. And we've seen the same power running formula now work at Michigan. And they paired it with a quarterback in J.J. McCarthy. He only went, what, 10 of 18 today? The stats weren't all that impressive. But they strangle you like a boa constrictor. And at the end of the day, you know, everybody loves the high-flying aerial attack. I think everybody was crowing over, over Michael Penix, right, over the past week after he had the big performance against Texas, the lefty quarterback. He threw a lot of great passes, especially passes downfield against Texas last week. But when you don't have the backbone of a run game, I don't care how high-flying your aerial assault is. If you cannot play defense and run the ball, and those are the two things that Michigan does best, you're not going to win against a team that's just as talented or more talented than you. And the, the, the formula proved true. The formula that Jim Harbaugh brought to Stanford and turned Stanford around with, the formula that Jim Harbaugh brought to the 49ers and turned the 49ers around with in 2011 to 2014, and the formula that Jim Harbaugh turned Michigan around with finally netted a national championship. 
Now, if we want to compare it to these 49ers, if we're really going to have that symmetry, what, uh, what do the 49ers do that not a lot of other teams are doing? They play elite defense, especially when they're rested and they have this bye week, and they have doubled down on running the football. They run it in a different way than Michigan does. Michigan's going to be running a ton of power scheme stuff, right? The 49ers are more of a zone blocking team, although they have added more power scheme things. But Shanahan's ultimate goal is similar to Jim Harbaugh's in that he wants to control the pace of the football game by running the football. Doesn't mean you don't pass, and Brock Purdy threw for a franchise record this year, but the 49ers are a run-first team because that's zagging while the rest of the league is zigging right now. Michigan was a run-first team because that's zagging while the rest of college football is zigging. I think that the willingness to tackle across all levels of football is lower than it's ever been. So you can really, really get a leg up on your opposition if you can run the football well. And Michigan, boy, did they run the football well in this game. It, look, it reminded me of those old Stanford days when Washington would play Stanford and the University of Washington would just get run out of the building by Stanford because they just couldn't stop the run. I mean, there was a hat on a hat and ultimately over the course of, it didn't even take 60 minutes, over the course of 30 minutes, it'd be a checkmate. The, 40, the, the, Stanford, the, the Stanford Harbaugh's back in that day, Harbaugh coach in Stanford, they just bleed the life out of the opposition. They had a game against Washington where they ran for like 400 yards. Washington just was not able to stop the run today. Looked like they had gotten accustomed to playing a team like Texas last week. They weren't used to that big bruising football that Harbaugh obviously picked up under Bo Schembechler in the Big Ten. So Michigan 15-0, they win the national championship. And now we sit and we wait to see if the 49ers can win the Super Bowl. We saw John Harbaugh out there on the field. It reminds you of the, the Harbaugh, right, when the 49ers lost to the Ravens. John Harbaugh still the coach of the Ravens. That would be symmetry. If the 49ers can, if Jim Harbaugh can win a Super Bowl, or win, if Jim Harbaugh can win a national championship in the same year that the 49ers win a Super Bowl against Jim Harbaugh's brother, John Harbaugh, to avenge the 2012 season Super Bowl when the lights went off at the New Orleans Superdome, and 49ers Ravens. Now that would bring everything full circle. And if you look at the probabilities, I think the most likely Super Bowl right now is 49ers Ravens. So sometimes you can't script this stuff. Sometimes I guess it was just all meant to circle back around. And now we also get to see if Jim Harbaugh stays at Michigan long term or if he'll be coaching against the 49ers in the NFL at some point soon. It's all theater. It really is. And today we had another great act over in Houston. That game should have been at the Rose Bowl. By the way, the Pac-12 is done. Speaking of Stanford and Jim Harbaugh coaching in the Pac-10 before it, expect, uh, before it expanded to the Pac-12, the conference played its final game today because I'm not sure what's going to happen with Oregon State and Washington State next next year. I think, that, I mean, I think they may be trying to stick around and go through the court system to, to collect some of that unpaid revenue. But 10 of the schools have left. Obviously, Washington is one of the schools that's left. The Pac-12 as we know it, the Pac-10, the Pac-8, whatever, you know, whatever area you're from, you probably know it as one of those numbers is no more. And today was the last game for that conference because Washington made it all the way to the national championship game. But it was the final Pac versus Big Ten game, right? And for that, I, I kind of thought that they should have played it in the Rose Bowl, but I get it. They're contractually obligated to play it in Houston. But it was cool that Jim Harbaugh was part of it. It was cool to see Jim Harbaugh win a national title. It brought everything full circle. And we will now see if the 49ers can bring the NFL part of this story full circle as well. All right. I hope everybody has a good night. Tonight was filled with college football. We'll get back to the pro game and talking about all that good stuff tomorrow.